Well, my name is Ferry Denhout, and I'm listening to Culture Matters. Good morning or good afternoon. I think it's more good afternoon, Ferry. How are you? Yeah, it's uh, it's the after, uh, short afternoon, and I'm uh, pretty much okay. The weather has improved uh, tremendously uh, this today, yes. so uh, we feel happy again. Okay, now now you have revealed most of 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 that what there is to to reveal because you're a Dutchman, I'm a Dutchman. And the first thing we talk we we talk about is the weather, because <laughs> as soon as the weather you know clears up, it is such a big thing for the Dutchies. Um, and for those of you who are listening to this, we're recording this on uh, the 2nd of May in uh, 2018, if you're listening to this in the future. So, and it, it's been, I've, I just came out from outside and I am frozen. You know, I, I want to get some sun, but I'm frozen. It's just, I'm so cold. <laughs> so the Dutch thing is, is, is the weather. All right. So we've revealed more or less, okay, uh, um, that we are pretty much in the same time zone. You are both a Dutchman, but tell us a little bit more about yourself, um, who you are, what you do. Well, where are you now at this moment? And what is your so-called cultural frame of reference? Yeah, well, the the weather I think is is more special for my kind of species than only for Dutchmen because I'm a retailer. A retailer, uh, okay. And, and a retailer uh, in, the, in the most part of my life in the fashion business. Uh huh. And the weather is crucial because if there's a promise for good weather, people start buying, and and then we have to be ready. So so the weather, and we always explain our turnover figures uh, related to the weather. The weather was good, the weather was bad. Normally the weather was bad, of course. Uh. And, uh, <laughs> and so weather is really a, a big part of, uh, of, of, of our business. So, well, your question, what, who am I and what, what did I do or what I do, do I do? Uh, I'm a 62-year-old um, retailer. Um, mainly in the fashion business already for uh, 40 years. Uh-huh. Uh, I was the uh, C- I was COO in 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 different companies. Um, the majority of my life I worked for Euretco, which is short for European Retail Company, with about 20 different formulas like uh, Intersports and to- Sport 2000 and Runners World and uh, Trend Hopper and you know. Uh, uh, in most of them independent retailer working in franchise mm-hmm. um, and I was there also responsible as COO for the production in China, India, Bangladesh. So that is that is a big part of my uh, life. Uh, after that I worked for uh, Miss Atom and Promise which is the Atom group, uh, a well-known fashion retailer uh, with fast fashion. Uh, also there in the position as COO and um, well, uh, and, and my last year I worked for ANWB, which is the automobile club uh, in the Netherlands, mm-hmm. who has also around 80 stores with private label in uh, outdoor clothing and shoes and, and also production there in, in, uh, in, uh, in all the sourcing countries. So that is really the, a big part of my well my life, uh, how I uh, I spend my life. Uh, I I am now in, an interim manager, so um, um, I you know I I try to have a little bit more, let's say chaos in my life. <laughs> Even uh, more. Jump jump from one to the other. Uh, uh-huh. So I help retailers and other companies now uh, with my experience. So that's that's what I do. Um, I think also the reason why we have contact and where I have had a lot of international contacts mm-hmm. beside the, the, the buying process, of course, of, of clothing, of apparel, um, was that I started in 2000. Uh, yes, in 2000, I, was, I became a board member of the Foreign Trade Association mm-hmm. in Brussels. And uh, one or two years after that, I was the chairman, with what they call the president of the Foreign Trade Association. The name has just changed from Foreign Trade Association into Amfori, uh-huh. uh, and the organization is still in Brussels. And that organization has, let's say, two main activities. One is the lobbying for free trade in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a European organization. 
so our board was was uh, consisting of people from Finland and from Germany and from Spain. Uh, uh, well, we we were always around eight or nine people. Mm -hmm. So there we had the different cultures on the table, mm -hmm. and I did that for let's say 12, 13 years. And one of the activities, what I said, was uh, the lobbying, and the other activity was sustainable uh, supply chains. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of pressure from from governments and from NGOs and from consumers that the retailers really had good processes to prevent crazy things like child labor exactly. and uh, and these things. So we we started in 2000. Uh, 10 uh, a project which is called BSCI business social compliance initiative uh, and that is the most successful social compliance scheme which there is in the world with over 2,000 uh, retailers and brands who are member mm -hmm. of that and they share the same database they they, they check the factories on on their uh, labor conditions and and safety and things like that so that is that is a big uh, uh, reference for me because uh, after doing that for 12 years and stop and when I stopped with uh, Atom, uh -huh. I it was like you know 56, 57, and I thought, well, I still want to start my own company. Mm -hmm. So then I started a consulting company in Brussels uh, uh, to help retailers and brands to implement this social scheme. Mm -hmm. in their companies because as you know the scheme is is very uh, good and it's uh, it's comprehensive but to implement that in your organization is it's different different uh, story so so that's what we that, that's where we started and and so I'm now partner of a consultant company in Brussels uh, doing these things. So, okay. the, well, that that is a that, that's probably one of the longest introduction covering a whole <laughs> career, a sixty year long career, well, a little bit less, of course. Um, I, I took some notes, and I want to, I want, I want because if if you're listening to this, I guess, I mean, I'm looking at you, and I am, I am, well, I'm asking the questions here partly. I guess if you're listening to this as, as one of the audience, a listener, then it's like, okay, well, he did, he did this, he did that, such, so. I'd like to get into a little bit more depth in, in a number of these things. You started, you're in Brussels at this moment, right? I'm, I'm looking at no, you. I'm, yeah, the, well, I'm partner of a company in uh, in Brussels, but I'm, at this moment, I sit in Rotterdam. And you're in so, Rotterdam. Okay, yeah. then I, in my we, house. Yeah. we might actually <laughs> go for a beer later on because I am uh, catching a train to actually go to Rotterdam where uh, we'll be staying uh, tonight. But that's on the side note. So we might actually meet in um, in person. Who knows? So you're in Rotterdam at this moment, which is the biggest one of the biggest ports in the world, or it has one of the biggest ports in the world, and it is in the Netherlands. I am in close to Brussels in Belgium. So we're relatively close to each other. You mentioned directly, uh, you started out with talking about the weather. And then you also said um, you are weather is important for you. Why? Because you have been in retail, and in retail, weather is crucial. You actually said it like that: weather is crucial. Um, and you explain your revenue figures, your re revenue numbers directly correlated by the weather. By the weather, is it that literal? Is it that literal? I mean, as we are talking right now, this is May second. There is a spell of good weather coming for the couple of the coming days, say five days in a row or something. The temperature is going to go up to twenty degrees centigrade, which is about seventy plus or something Fahrenheit. So we're going to get a nice weather here. Is it that correlated directly the um, the stuff that people buy? Yeah, completely. You look at your own situation. Uh, you see the nice weather coming. Uh, you look in your closet. Well, do you have everything in place? Do you have your still your polos uh, ready? Uh -huh. uh, do you have uh, Do you have white trousers? Uh, uh, the one was stained last year, so you have to go for a new one. Right. And you know, and you know the weekend is coming, so uh, you have to do something because you go with your friends to a barbecue right. and say, well, what What do I wear? And and men has that less than women, um, but but still it's there, so you can already feel it. And okay. and if you look at this year. January was extremely cold. Yes. So, you know, uh, people only buy jackets and uh, and boots uh -huh. uh, and hand gloves and caps. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing they buy. And then March was, was also very cold. Huh? But March is a very crucial period in fashion retail 
because then people start buying for their children, uh, the new spring collection, right. uh, new collections are there. And, but March was dead in the stores because there was such a cold weather. Mm -hmm. And then we came April, we had a beautiful weekend. Yes. And then everybody jumps to the stores okay. and go for it. <laughs> that's, that's quite interesting. And, and is this a, a Western European or a European, say, slash North American perspective? Yeah, well, it has to do with a lot of uh, weather changes because w when you are in the Caribbean and it's always thirty degrees, yes, uh, it's 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 no interest. Uh, so, exactly. Yeah. So that 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 was one of my questions because I mean, you are um, you're you're a Dutchman. You're in you're living at this moment in Western Europe. You have mentioned a number of um, European, international though, but still European brands. Um, how about, I mean, hypothetical, no, it's not even hypothetical. If you go to a place like Guatemala, Guatemala City ha is known as this, the, this, the, the nickname of Guatemala City is the, the, the city of eternal spring. The temperature hardly changes. I mean, it is, it's, uh, during the summer, it's 20 degrees and during the winter, it's 20 degrees. Or, I mean, it, it doesn't fluctuate. They have a dry and a wet season, though. Is that, does that influence the, the amount of people, uh, how people buy their stuff as well? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, completely. Uh, okay. Because we, we uh, because uh, the clothing is well protecting yourself, uh, but also building on your image. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so there's a lot of more, of course, there are much more influences like, like, uh, what is in fashion, uh, what colors are in fashion. So all the designers uh, make us believe that everything we have in the closet is old, and we need something new. And so that is the whole process of, of retail, of course. Yeah. Uh, um, but 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 with in countries where there is a lot of change of weather, mm -hmm. I think that is there. It is extremely important because it is still the case. We have fast fashion where you change collections every month, uh -huh. but still there's a big season for winter uh, while you buy different things than for summer. So that uh, and and people you know take the risk buy for millions of of of, of goods. Yeah. And we have to get rid of in only maybe six or seven weeks because that is then you have to do your sales. That is a yeah. short time slot indeed. Um, exactly. Now, you and I both know uh, Imran, uh, Imran Rat, who's been on the show um, uh, on the Culture Matters podcast as well. He was on episode number 8080, if you want to listen back to that. And we talked about textile industry or his role. Um, your role is somewhat different than what he does. But he said, he, he made a very interesting remark, actually. You know, nowadays in 2018 and well earlier as well, you've got these uh, these ragged jeans, jeans with holes and tears and stuff like that. You know, and he said, you know, when I go to Bangladesh or Pakistan, where he, he do, does a lot of business, people manufacturing that stuff are wondering, like, what are these Europeans wearing? You know, and he had this story. He said, I came across one of those factory workers who said, I don't understand why the Westerns, you know, want holes in their in their trousers. And he said, I have one in my cupboard. They can have that. Why do you make a perfectly nice jeans and then tear it up? Is that yeah. is that something? Why do we do that? Is that an international thing that we do? Or is that only Western European? Or what is that? No, I think if you look at, at it, it makes a big difference when you have um, when you are young or when you're older. When you're older, um, you see that in most countries uh, it is more culture related. So mm -hmm. the clothing. So if you look at, uh, for instance, southern Germany, you uh -huh. still see people with jackets which have these which which look like the lederhosen uh, type of style. Okay, and so. Um, and and also when you in 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 the Netherlands, uh, it's it's also it's it's very culture related for oh. older people, um, which is also different. So the 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 big brands like H and M and Zara and so on, they are really focusing on younger children because they're we call it the the, the MTV uh, type uh -huh. of fashion yes. yeah, because everybody's copying. The the, the 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 pop stars and uh -huh. and so, and that's worldwide the same. So you see, for young people, you see quite stable uh, type of fashion uh, all over the world because they're copying uh, their hero, their heroes. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go to older people, it is it is different. So you also don't see big change uh, of clothing worldwide for older people. 
for <laughs> and let's say 50 plus uh, something like that yes uh, and the 50 is is, is also changing because uh, ladies from 60 uh, close themselves as 30s uh, um, i do <laughs> that, that yeah yeah same for me so mm, good but but there's a different it's a, it's a culture related and and i've once I had a study from uh, Kurt Salmon, mm -hmm. and uh, they really have culture lines in fashion uh, in the world. So, so our culture fashion line for all the people is um, it's a little bit Flander is 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 still a little bit into the North European, mm -hmm. and then you go to Poland through Germany, and so you can really uh, design culture. Um, landscapes right where uh, so for instance uh, uk is different but if you take ireland mm -hmm. uh, it's more your american so it's also okay. in retail so it's interesting but uh, so is, is that is that like that that culture map that you said in terms of, of of drawing lines in terms of is that a line that you can is, is that a predictability map in terms of you know what people will would like to wear on a likely scale yeah Exactly, and 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 you can see that, for instance, the Scandinavian fashion is very comparable with the with the with the Dutch and the British. Um, so, uh, but if you go back to the South, France, mm -hmm. Spain, Italy, it's 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 again a different style. Yeah. Then and then within that, also of course, uh, uh, culture, clothing is also different. Like for instance, interesting in Belgium. Um, uh, we had a, a chain of shops, and we were exporting to Belgium. Uh -huh. And we and one of our key items was a blue dress, and dark blue is not very successful in Belgium, and we didn't know why. Uh -huh. And and we when we found out that the people using their uniforms to go to school, they're normally dark blue. Right. So when they get older and they get out of school, they don't want to wear this blue anymore. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. but until you find out, you know, you have, we have yeah, yeah. a lot of money there. Uh, yeah. Exactly. You bump your nose and you wonder why are not why don't people buy this blue? Blue is so is so neutral. It's such an everyday color. Um, all right. Well, that, that's in and by itself. That's already very interesting. But you moved on in your career and then, then you became a board member of FTA, uh, the Foreign Trade Commission. Uh, eventually, you turned to be president there. Um, foreign foreign trade commission. That sounds very obvious. Okay, that's a lobby. Well, that's what you explained at least. How do you change? How do you change foreign trade commission into a name called Amphori? What? How, how do you do that? Well, it was uh, the, the, the well. It was uh, after my period of of being okay. uh, in the board. So, um, uh, but I can understand because. We had two trade. The foreign. It, there was not the foreign trade commission. It was foreign trade association. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a was a uh, an association owned by the the retail members okay. uh, in the in Europe. Uh, and beside that, there was the BSCI, Business Social Compliance Initiative, yes. which was also a brand name for the social compliance. So there were two brand names: BSCI and Foreign Trade Association, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and, F, and the short for Foreign Trade Association is FTA. Mm -hmm. And an FTA is also used a lot in international trade as a foreign trade agreement. Yep. So there was a lot of misunderstanding about what FTA is and, and, and then the two brand names. And then the board decided, well, you know, let's go for a complete different strategy mm -hmm. and we, we make a new name. So okay. that, that was okay. the, the basis. It's out of convenience. So what 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 did you do there? I mean, what does a foreign trade commission? What is Amphori? What did they do? What do they do right now? What is their their reason for existing? Well, the the the, the reason is that um, in especially in like twenty years ago, we had a lot of problems with with imports. So all these companies were importing from China and from Bangladesh and so on. Yeah. And uh, there were quotas, so so the, there were limitations. Uh, in terms of were, the amount of stuff that you could import, yeah, yeah. could could import. Uh, there were a lot of taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a lot of difficulties in customs regulations. Right. And so this association was really to to get rid of all these barriers, these mm -hmm. trade barriers, mm -hmm. to have free trade. That was really the, and that is still is one of the goals of uh, so that. 
that the, the retailers really can do easy business with their foreign partners. And that changed a little bit because now all the retailers are also going to sell in uh, in China. Right. Uh, they start stores. Yeah. So it's also to have to get rid of the barriers in China to start a retail chore or to sell your brand. So so now it's more a two way traffic issue. So that was really the the core of the of of the association. You mentioned something something which is very uh, current at this moment. Uh, talking about beginning of May 2018, uh, the back going back and forth of trade. I mean, we've got this potential trade war coming up between the United States and uh, Europe and China, and then China, the U.S., etc. To what extent does does that organization, the, the, the that Foreign Trade Commission, I'm for now, still have a function there, or are they are they with their are their hands tied? Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's a lobby, so you can only have influence. And one right. of the things uh, we did was to uh, to do a study uh, together with universities to 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 see the impact of a free trade agreement between China and uh, and Europe, uh -huh. which is not there. But uh, and 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 the outcome of that study was that everybody profits uh, from that. So then from free trade, for free trade, yes, yeah. So, uh, so that is one of the activities of Amphori. So to really to um, to show to to decision makers, mm -hmm. um, yeah, what what the impacts uh, are, yeah. and also to give practical examples, mm -hmm. uh, so they don't make strange regulations. Uh, for instance, mm. there are anti-dumping rules, uh, but if I'm a retailer, and uh, within a month. I cannot import uh, trousers anymore from China or there is 20% uh, uh, tax on it, mm -hmm. it kills the business. Yes. And and you have to explain that with examples, how it works, that we buy already nine months ahead mm -hmm. as a retailer. Uh, and decision and policy makers don't think of that. Uh, so you really have constantly, you're explaining mm -hmm. what that means for the companies, but also for the employees because in retail i think it's it is the biggest industry where where so many people work mm -hmm. that's tremendous in all the stores and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and so on so yeah. so it's more explaining and 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 showing what impacts are so we uh, we always said we talk about transparency yeah. easy and uh, things that people can understand predictability which is extremely important so you can adjust your business uh, to new regulations, and and that is, and that is what Amphori does. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that that, that makes good sense. But it, it, is it is it easier to negotiate, um, or do you only negotiate with say the European Commission or the Europeans, or do you also negotiate with the Americans and the Chinese? And if so, who is easiest to deal with, from your perspective? Uh -huh. Are they all equally difficult? Yeah, it's, 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 for me, it's difficult to say because I didn't do a lot of negotiations there because we were a board. Yeah? Uh -huh. So we were uh, like a supervisory board. Right. So we were not really in the middle of the of, of, the, of the process. So we were overseeing what was done by the team of, let's say, 60 people in Brussels mm -hmm. uh, doing that lobby work and doing the social compliance. Mm -hmm. um, but... Um, Yeah, what I always uh, said is uh, uh, simple messages um, are working. Yeah. Uh, um, and and modest way of bringing things forward right. uh, work. The kiss, so I, the kiss principle. I, I don't know that principle. The, the uh, keep it short and simple. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Short and simple, but also modest and and uh, and really explaining what the practical with examples. Uh, how it works, uh, and, and indeed keep it simple. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. Um, you also, you're also, you are involved um, in social compliance, yeah. and because as so, for me, as soon as you mention uh, textile importing stuff from Bangladesh from China, I think it's it'll be on a lot of people's mind: child labor, you know, yeah. misuse of of whatever you know positions and and cheap labor and stuff like that, and horrible working conditions, etc. Is that what social compliance is about, or does it stretch further than that? No, it's it's, it's it is child labor. It is safety. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, the the whole Bangladesh Accor uh, buildings collapsing. Exactly. That's yeah. that's, that's an issue. Um, uh, and and now also waste. 
uh, um, poison and things like that are are crucial. So that is well a, a big area where uh, retailers have to deal with uh, these days, and and that is. That's quite difficult for a retailer because you know you just want to do trade because yes. that's what you're yeah. born for, yeah. uh, and uh, and you want to buy things which are good. And uh, but of course, and everybody wants to do good because uh, I I hardly see any crooks in this business. Uh, well, I, mean, I don't see any crooks. Uh, mm-hmm. People really want to do good, mm-hmm. um, but it is the matter: can you control and uh, is it feasible and uh, how much is your influence? Uh, so I, yeah. Is, 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 is that something, I mean, that, 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 that is social compliance, right? It's, it's yeah. more than just child labor, it's safety, uh, it's uh, pollution, all these, kind of, uh, all these kind of good things. Is, is, that, uh, is that really a necessity, Ferry, um, because it's really necessary? Or is this something that we can do, we being in, in the Western, maybe North American uh, area, because we're so rich? Or is it, is, like I said, is it really a, ne- a necessity to do so? No, you also see the, the the developing countries really understand what is the what is the situation mm-hmm. uh, that they, they also want to improve. Uh, mm-hmm. So we we talked a lot with the Chinese that uh, and 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 of course we we were sending this message that you know we have to ac- account for these things to our uh, consumers uh, mm-hmm. that that we do well, but uh, we also know that we need the governments to. Because in Europe, it's not, it's really, it's not an issue. Why? We, because we have a good registration. We have people, uh, the governments are checking whether you, people are paid well and when they pay overtime and they have unions and things yeah. like that. So, uh, and the fact that, that these bodies are not really, well, sometimes not working as well as in Europe. Mm-hmm. And, and that is the reason why there are these issues in these countries. And so we, we spent as much energy on checking factories as on influencing gov- governments mm-hmm. to take their own responsibility. Uh, and uh, as for instance, I think China is a good example. They really, really want to change. So they put a lot of legislation, they put a lot of checking. They, so, um, so they do a lot to, to get rid of, of, of the, of these uh, situations. Okay. Um, but then for, for other countries, um, India, for instance, it's it's much more difficult. Yeah? In China, when you have a, a rule, everybody has to play that rule. Yes. Uh, but the, the but the the culture in in India is completely different. It's completely distributed. And uh, is it and less centralized in India then? Yes, absolutely. It's it's one big chaos. So and, and hence, because it's less centralized, the government, the central government, the federal government does not have the long reach that maybe the Chinese government has. No, oh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's a completely different culture. So uh, uh, so we had a lot of difficult discussions with, with Indian people because they say, well, you know, if, if these children cannot uh, make uh, clothing, what, what will they do? Will they go into prostitution or right. things like that? So That's uh, also an argument. It's, it is an argument. Huh? And, and, uh, um, and, we, and we always said, well, you know, you, it is not black or white. You can also help them going to school, um, and and when you have good working, good good living places mm-hmm. close to the factories, and you give the children education and, uh, and and make the combination, then then things are already improving. So, um, so would you say it, that China is ahead of the game in terms of um, of this social compliance? Yes, yes, you can say it like that. Yeah. Okay, and and how about if you take Europe because there are still companies, you know that. Uh, Western European companies that outsource to Bulgaria, to Romania. Who are the laggards, or who are are ahead of the game? In if you take only take an, only look at Europe. Well, in, uh, we 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 it it is so good organized in Europe, um, also in in the eastern part of mm-hmm. Europe uh, that we say well this is. A, a, no priority for for okay. retailers. That's good uh, news it, then. Yeah, it's it's quite it's it's okay there, yeah. you know. And the governments take their responsibilities, and um, so so there's a, you don't see also issues in the press or. Right. Uh, 
Oh, and if you if you look at textile and re- retail textile etc uh, are, are the only big big players really the subcontinent of india like pakistan india and bangladesh and china or are is there any competition from other parts of the world because i haven't heard anybody say anything about south america or central america is it just doesn't happen there yeah south america works a lot for for the united states mm-hmm. uh it is still quite difficult for for europeans to work there um why would that be uh i don't know I, I, it, uh, it's a long distance it, it is it is not organized yet mm-hmm. so there are because bias follow mainstreams also yes. to countries. Uh, yeah. So um, shoes, shoes and sandals and things like Brazil is, for instance, important. Um, but but for the rest, you don't you don't hear people talking about that. Uh, Africa is coming now. Okay. Ethiopia is coming. Uh-huh. Um, um, but then the logist, you know, it's also predictability there. Uh, so retailers really say, well, we need these orders and we want them yeah. in the second week of February. And oh, then yeah. you want them there instead of, well, maybe three months later or so. Yeah, huh? so, yeah, yeah, because you have this limited time slot like you explained exactly. earlier yeah. as well. Is it, yeah. is it, if, if you if you go to any of the Inditex uh, stores, which is Zara, uh, what else do they have? Uh, Massimo Dutti, um, uh Pull and bear. Uh, this is I like they're they're overtaking the world. It seems like in, in textile, at least the Spanish company. When you buy your clothes, do you check the label? Is, is that is that something you do, or do you know intrinsically? Well, this comes from there. That comes from there. Oh, well, ninety percent comes from China, so <laughs> <laughs> okay. so you don't have to look at it. <laughs> That's also probability. Oh my yeah. goodness! Yeah, it's yeah. it's quite it's quite amazing. This whole this whole textile industry. Um, do you get any any uh, uh, yeah pushback? Like yeah, that's you well you say it's nice, you know. You say that regulation in China and India, you're working on that, but you know it's just window dressing. Do you ever get that? Do you ever hear that? Yes, of course. But but so people really want proof that that uh, so we the system how we work now. We really sent in people into the factories having interviews with the employees, uh-huh. uh, checking the exits, checking the fire systems, uh, uh, checking the, the, the amounts they get paid, the overtime they get paid, uh, the hours they work. So that is all really checked. So we get really from factories uh-huh. every half year, we get an audit report of their situation and, and, and we are working for improvement. So we send the management of the factories to, to uh, uh, I call that courses mm-hmm. uh, to learn how to right. improve yes. these things, yeah. and, and so they call it capacity building. So uh, it it is not well, you know, it's believe it, but uh, and especially if you look at uh, the, the companies like Aldi and Lidl, uh, mm-hmm. they really require from their suppliers because most of the time they don't buy directly, but they buy through traders or yeah. through brands. And they really want their, these traders or brands to prove right. every piece which is produced where and how the situation was and uh, and how it can be improved. And if they have done a good, a good rating, they, they are not allowed to order there anymore. So it's, it, it is much more than that. So, right, okay. Uh, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's, it's further and, and broader, broader than just uh, textile, et cetera, et cetera. This morning I went to Little... I picked up some um, some asparagus and some some chicken and some mozzarella and that should all be and I have no idea where this stuff comes from to be honest mm. I don't I don't check that but it's you're saying it's it's going the good the well the right direction the, yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely okay. well that's 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 quite good news then um, I wanna I want to uh, move towards the end of the conversation the end of the interview because uh, I don't want to take up much much more of your time. Uh, we're only 34 minutes into um, into talking about this. I find that a very fascinating subject. It's a world, you know, that we, as a consumer, you don't see this. Mm-hmm. You just, you know, you, you you get from this clothing rack or you, you go to the supermarket, you take it out and you go home and, yeah, this comes from Brazil or this comes from, you know, I have no idea how many hands actually touched something like that. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, um, I lost my chain of thought now. Um yeah, but I got three questions left for you. What's the next fashion? What is the? Do you know what we're gonna wear next summer? When the summer of 2019? Do you know that? No, I I don't know. You don't so, care or you don't know? 
No, you know, I, for, for me, I'm more on the distance now. Eh? So uh -huh. uh, because I'm out of the real retail, so I don't have presentations anymore from right. uh, trend watches uh -huh. and things like that. So that was all uh, before. Yeah. So I really, I really don't know. But if you look at uh, for men, it it is interesting because you see. Um, they say also fashion is predicting the economic growth or so on. Right? Yes. So if, if we are in good economic situations, people get modest. They go for gray and white and black and all these colors. Uh -huh. And if, if we go into a recession, we start wearing colors uh -huh. uh, to make life a little bit more bright. You know, right. yes. the compensation for uh -huh. our, our mind. So, so these, are, these are trends. So I think we are in a very good economic situation uh retailers in europe are also quite happy with the dollar which mm -hmm. is uh, which is quite cheap at the moment so and and that comes back to the consumers again so we will inflation will be a problem uh, i think yeah. still in, from, according to this respect maybe oil is diff something yeah, course, different or, but uh, um so uh, so i think the the big Block color blocks and things so on will not will not appear yet. Okay. I'm just okay. I'm just looking at what I'm wearing. I'm wearing I'm wearing the torn jeans here, a simple sweater. The only thing, and I'll show you my socks. I'm wearing very bright red blocked socks. If you want to see my socks, you can you can check out the Culture Matters website and go to YouTube, and then you can actually see what Ferry and I are talking about. Um, your your color color scheme is quite modest as well. Yes, yes, I'm. Uh, uh, yes, I'm because I'm. I've uh, had this nice holiday in the Caribbean, so my face is a little bit colored. Ah, so okay. then I don't need anything else to. Okay. Uh, so we're, we're the, the foresight, the the future for the eco economy seems quite good, according to <laughs> to Ferry Den Hoot. All right, Ferry. <laughs> Two more questions left, please. Uh, the one but last question is uh, something I prepped you for already. Can you give us three tips to become more culturally competent, please? Well, I, I, because we had this interview, so I was thinking about it. What, you know, what what is what is, uh, and I don't know. Uh, um, I really, in all my experiences in the board, uh, and also traveling to Asia, mm -hmm. I was always thinking. You know, uh, because I heard about all the the books which are written, which I've never read. I've never had a study from your side. No, I never I never hired you. Never too uh, late. Never too late. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, um, and I, the, w one of the things is I, we have more difficulties with between Belgium and Holland mm -hmm. because we speak speak the same language and then we think we are the same. Yeah. Then when you go to China, because True. if you are as uh, I'm uh, uh, almost two meters high, so if I'm in China, everybody can see that I'm different. Yeah. Uh, um, we speak different languages. Yeah. So we are very forgiving. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to each other because we know we are different species mm -hmm. and um, uh, I always had the, the privilege to be a buyer so I was always the, the boss of course yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, you had the uh, upper hand yeah there's also that's different so I can maybe it's easy for me to say but uh, my idea always was if you're modest and you are empathic and you look at people and and go with the flow then everybody's forgiving. So if you are on a table uh, and you don't, and you are expected as the boss to start eating, if you don't eat, somebody next to you will help you start mm -hmm. eating. So, um, so modesty and and relax. I think that is for me the biggest tip you can do to overcome uh, 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 problems and and uh, and especially in 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 like Belgium, Holland. Mm -hmm. I think there. Uh, f forget that we are the same species. Right. We are we are different yeah. species. Uh, so um, uh, the Belgians find the Dutch arrogant, and the Dutch, you know, uh, find the Belgium strange. Things like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, but it's uh, you know it's complete nonsense. We are just different. Uh, yeah. But the problem is that we speak the same. And it's it. I think I always take the parallel between uh, men and women. Yeah. And when I say women from Venus and men from Mars. Yes. Uh, and the problem is that we think we are from the same planet. I think that is also uh, in, in culture uh, uh, a parallel which you can uh, draw. 
Venus and Mars. Okay, excellent. Um, I'll I'll draw up some um, some excellent tips here because you mentioned a couple of you mentioned a lot of things in 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 simple words like this. Um, because also, indeed, you know, don't take for granted that we are that we're, we are not the same just because we are, because the differences are not that obvi obvious. Good stuff, Fairy. Thank you. Thank you very much. If people want to get in touch with you, should they want to, how can they best do that? Well, they can contact you and you can contact me. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. I'll play it like that. If you want to if you want to hear the latest fashion news, then don't contact me because Ferry is not the right is not the right uh, contact. For if you want to know more about social compliance, however, then for sure yeah. contact uh, you can go to Culture Matters, you can contact me um, and I'll I'll uh, I'll get you through in contact with um, with uh, uh, or go to the website uh, of our company which is cocomply.eu. Uh, okay. that's also uh, with a C, co comply. Yes. One word. C O M P L Y dot E U. C O C O M M P P L Y. P L Y dot E U. Comply together. <laughs> co comply. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. We've got it nailed here. Thank you so much, Fairy. Thank you for your time. Uh, okay. Enjoy the upcoming uh, uh, spring break or spring weather if you want. And I'm pretty sure we'll bump into each other in the future. Take care. Okay, Chris. It was fun. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.